In the Asia-Pacific region there are always many regulatory developments. Some of them are accelerated and some might be slowed down a bit. Of course, we will learn more about this in October in London, but we are happy to have Raymond Zhu with us from REACH 24H. He would tell us about the most important issues for industry to pay attention to between the Dragon Boat Festival and the Mid Autumn Festival. Hi Raymond, how was the Dragon Boat Festival? Glad to have your invitation here. I didn't participate in the Dragon Boat Festival, but my family and I had a wonderful driving trip around Hangzhou. Uh, the sightseeing was perfect and I love it. What are the first experiences and challenges with implementing MEE Order 12 in China so far? Happy to share some first experience. Uh, after half a year of implementation of ME Order number 12, companies have felt the uh, convenience brought about by the revision of the regulation. Uh, for example, the substances less than one ton per year only need to be notified, and there is no data requirements. Uh, companies will obtain a notification received immediately after the submission. Uh, this will reduce a lot of money and time for the compliance with the same tonnage ban compared with order number 7. I'll give you one more example. The substances with 1 to 10 tons per year compared with the previous first ban regular registration, MEE order number 12, will eliminate all health toxicological data for the 1 to 10 tons uh, of the simplified registration. Um, you may only need to focus on the physical chemical data, ecotoxicological data, and degradation and bioaccumulation for 1 to 10 tonnage band. Uh, for those low volume substances especially, the data requirements have been significantly simplified. However, uh, in the process of, of uh, implementing the new measures, enterprises are also facing new difficulties and challenges. Uh, which among the most representative ones are the registration of polymer and the strategy for the regular notification. Can you tell us more about the notification of polymers under MEE Order 12? Uh, polymers are very special. So polymer usually pose less hazard to human health and environment. Uh, besides synthesizing by different monomers are easy to form different polymers, which may be reviewed as new substances. Um, ABE order number 7 has special simplified process to those kind of polymers that fulfill the polymer with low concern or 2% polymer, uh, which is a special simplified registration. According to the statistical cases under the number 7, 60% of the registration are from polymer. In order number 12, uh, those simplified registration change to the record notification but those polymers shall not be in the scope of five exclusion conditions. Um, the exclusion under ME on number 12 are very similar to those in the US TASCA polymer exemption manual guidelines. Um, per our experience, the polymer that are qualified for the special registration under the former ME on number seven are sometimes no longer able to apply for the same exemption under ME on number 12 according to the exclusion one, canonic polymer exclusion, uh, which means the company have to go for the registration for those polymers. In addition, the record notification has a random inspection by MEE. So if the official believes that the notifications are not valid after the random check, the notification will be canceled. The applicants need to bear the um, corresponding legal representative stipulated in the measures. Therefore, it is recommended that the um, enterprises treat the judgment of the compliance of the polymer with more caution. Um, the technical difficulty of judging the conformity of a polymer is much more difficult now than that of before. So companies that do not have the ability to judge on their own are advised to seek help for, from professionals or institutions. Professional support can be useful indeed. Despite the fact that PMB criteria are the same in China as in EU reach, good understanding of the persistent and bioaccumulative identification also seems recommended. Yes, correct. Uh, for simplified registration and uh, regular registration, the data requirements are progressive, depending on the persistence and the bioaccumulation of the substance. Mm, especially for regular registration with relative very high tonnage, the uh, data requirements for uh, substances other than non-B, non-P, or um, PRB and PNB are very different. So that is the data plan and the period for the entire registration cannot be determined at the very beginning. 
uh, once the P and B properties of a substance are determined, the data strategy may need to be re revised for several times. And the uh, overall test period may also vary between like two or three years. Um, sometimes this will affect hardly to the trade plan. Uh, especially the determination of the persistence, um, some substances that cannot be excluded through the screening test are persistent. Um, if you still insist on trying to eliminate the possible per, uh, persistence properties, uh, it will involve a more complicated test, and the test may encounter more difficulties and is time consuming. Um, in general, the determination of P or B properties of uh, substances uh, as early as possible has become the most critical part. One last question on MEE Order 12. I learned that also confidential business information rules are different. That is right. The CBI issue is often a uh, concern for enterprises. Uh, compared with the cases that the uh, application can be passed under the order number 7, the uh, order number 12 put more strict requirements for CBI protection of the identification information of the substance. Um, for example, a substance that has been registered under EU REACH is re rejected for CBI protection. Um, therefore, companies should be more careful of such CBI protection application. Um, talking about the care for, I also like to say something on the official supervision of new substances. Uh, this has been in a state of incompleteness for many years, but recently the uh, order number 12 has paid great attention to this aspect. It can be seen that in the past six months, especially uh, in the second quarter, there have been many holes up of goods in customers for no registration of new chemicals. Um, in addition, we recently learned that the uh, MEE compiled a list that are the, um, the new substances plus enterprises and uh, issued it to the uh, various local environmental protection departments, requesting them to conduct on-site verification. So this is the first time that the large-scale targeted supervision movement of the local environmental protection department that has, uh, that has appeared. Uh, this is showing the strength and supervision. In June, MEE issued a draft guiding opinions on further strengthening the supervision of echo environment, uh, double random, and one public. This also provides an important supplement to the uh, comprehensive supervision of new substances. Interesting. It shows how well informed and prepared industry and authorities should be when implementing new regulations. Industry should of course keep a close look on new developments and where possible provide their comments. I know industry provided a lot of input for the draft India Chemicals Management and Safety Rules. Is there news in relation to this? Um, as you know, the India Chemicals uh, Management and Safety Rules, ICMSR, a draft was um, first, firstly released in November 2019 and has been revised multiple times. The uh, latest and the fifth version was published on the August 24, 2020. ICMSR was planned to be into force this year, uh, early this year, and it will give comprehensive management on the uh, new and existing substances, priority substances, and hazardous substances. Although there are many points unclear, the uh, regulation has passed the legal venting for the final decision and may become into force this year. Uh, which will give a very big effect to the entire in, uh, industry. So it is suggest to be prepared based on the current information. Uh, all existing and new substances manufactured or imported in India in quantity larger than one ton per year must be notified. Uh, must be notified to the uh, chemical regulatory division. Uh, this initial notification period does one year after the ICMSR entered into force. Uh, existing substances should then be notified within 180 days and the uh, new substances must be notified at least 60 days prior to the date they are placed on the market in India. So since the notification in India is expected to come with the fee per tonnage band, industry could already start uh, making a 
portfolio overview and make a realistic judgment uh, of their own volumes. So the notifier shall uh, update the information such as the new uses, uh, data, tonnages, etc. Submitted annually no later than six days after the end of each calendar year. Um, all notified substances will form the India chemical inventory. So there is no such inventory yet, but uh, so this will be the result of the notification. Companies that have notified the substances and paid the associate fee will receive a notification certificate as a proof of, of compliance. Um, registration must be carried out no later than 18 months after a substance has been included in the Schedule 2. Uh, currently, there are 750 priority substances on this list. For these substances, the registration deadline equals to the end of the initial notification period. So a company looking into its India portfolio should pay special attention to the current priority substances in Schedule 2. Always a lot of things industry should pay attention to. Are there other regulatory developments in the Asia-Pacific our Camp Connection viewers should watch out for the coming ones? Uh, yes, in that respect, I would like to mention Taiwan and Vietnam. For the Taiwanese TASCA, the drafted revised regulation is most important. The registration period for PEC substances is uniformly extended from two to three years to four years. In the current version of the registration regulation, the registration period for PEC substances above 100 ton per year is like two years. For PEC substances of one to 100 ton per year is three years. Taking into account the substantial impact of the epidemic uh, of industry, the most companies cannot complete the uh, PEC standard regis registration within the uh, given time. The revised registration, uh, the revised registration regulation has inter, uh, extended the deadline for PEC registration. Compared with the current relevant re regulations, the uh, amendment will no longer, uh, will no longer distinguish the uh, tonnage after it comes into effect. And the deadline for standard registration will be extended to four years. For example, if an enterprise obtained the phase one registration code before December 31st, 2019, and the annual manufacturing or input volume is more than one ton per, uh, one ton per year when the phase one registration code is issued, um, he should uh, complete the standard registration before December 31st, 2023. Uh, the next will be the optimization of the validity period of approved registration and data confidentiality. Um, in the current version of the registration regulation, the validity period of the approved new chemicals substances registration and the data confidentiality validity period are not harmonized. Uh, sometimes um, it is um, two years and some are five years. Uh, in the uh, amendment, the validity period for the approved registration and the data confidentiality are unified to five years. And it is clear regulated that the uh, total validity period of data for new chemical substances is 15 years. So more time for companies in Taiwan. You also mentioned developments in Vietnam. Um, Vietnam opened the uh, fifth implementation of their draft national chemical inventory, aiming to establish, establish the uh, basic inventory for the uh, further new chemical regulation. Until now, the uh, dom uh, domestic entities can still submit the uh, nomination through the single window on the Vietnam National Chemical Database. The uh, amendment of the new chemical regulation under the law on chemicals uh, was pulled up with the industry at the official meeting last year. We have heard that the draft is almost down, but it is still not very clear for the process at this moment. There are several interesting points for global companies. Uh, exemption, approval of foreign inventory, new chemical and foreign chemical registration, registration of polymers, and reviewing process for the registration dossiers.
the uh, foreign chemical registration looks very interesting since the uh, chemical listed in the foreign chemical inventory will be much simplified for the registration. Similar to the uh, Canada New Substances Notification Regulation, uh, some of the data endpoints will be exempted. We see some foreign listed like uh, US TASCA, Japan CSCL, uh, REACH are included in the uh, VN National Database. Hypothetically, chemicals registered or listed in these regulations are much more easier for a new chemical reg registration EVN. Raymond, thank you very much. More on this end of October at Chemcon Europe 2021 in London.